do the same thing he was doing. I was trying to figure out how could it be okay for him to do it when I come here and use a coping with it, I can't do it. I guess there's one lost that. He brings these witnesses in here like all the Christians. He kept bringing them pictures out over and over and over again. That would kill us all in pictures he showed off the Christian and it cumulative. He didn't have a cumulative when he showed off the Christian pictures. And he asking all these people that ain't no this here and that there. So when I say something, why do I have to be cumulative? Your objection to Kenner Swan? He asked her, can you tell us what John Brooks said about our murder? That is hearsay. And that's where the statement of John Brooks to that extent. He's indicated he already asked John Brooks about that. So asking her again not only would be hearsay, but it would be cumulative of what he asked John Brooks. He's not stating that somehow John Brooks said something different to her than what he said here in the court. And therefore, there'd be no basis to get into what he said and just to have her just say, let me buy that and tell me everything that John Brooks said about it. Okay, again, did you investigate the threats to Omar Ray that were reported to you by the people that you interviewed? We do. Other than the principal, what type of investigation did you do? Well, Any time that we do interviews and they mention another person that may have information, we go to that person and, and try and track it down. Unfortunately, in this case, every time we spoke to someone that had information about the threats, it was very vague. It was they, they weren't sure when it was made and they weren't sure you know who actually said it and they heard it from a third party. So we investigated it, but it didn't lead anywhere. So, when you interviewed Verona Harper, uh, I'm sorry, Verona Harper, Andrea Long, Ryan Mack, and Court Star, Tanya Nason, and John Brooks, did they tell you who the person was who was threatened, Mr. Brooks? No, they did not. Did anybody ever say Jamie who was threatened, Mr. Omar Ray, on his Facebook? No, they did not. Any the physical evidence uh, that connect me to the Omar Ray case other than this shell case in the back of my car? The shell casing was the physical evidence that we had. Okay. Did you find any DNA, hair, fingerprint, palm print, shoe prints, or blood at the Omar Ray crime scene that matched Jamie Hood? No, we did not. Did you find a gun that was used to kill Mr. Omar Ray? We did not. No further questions. No questions.
I got the phone message here from a judge in Miami. It says she is beginning a double murder trial that leaves Mr. Robinson. And I'm going to call for that. It's the same issue that we're talking about. My question to you is, can you now predict who you would call Mr. Robinson? So I've got to talk to this judge about something. Well, I think he might call that for the other judge. So if he's, I don't think he'd be, we're going to hold off tomorrow. When he says he'd be gone tomorrow, he'd be back Friday. He will ask. I'm not going to let him know. I'm not going to let him know. I guess my question is, can you not consider calling him first thing tomorrow? I don't think you would. It's a huge case. I mean, I got my case in order. I'm calling him. And I got him the last one. And I really don't think I could, Judge. I mean, what irritates me is he is this trial being going, and he comes, when he comes in the Sunday, we talk about it. And I'm sure you don't have to tell me anything like that. I just, I really can't. I mean, I just need to know so I can know what to tell this judge. So, yeah. Well, I hope I showed you that, Mr. Green. You know, I'm not trying to be hard on you. That's not, I just, I had to ask you. I can't, Judge. If I could, I would. If I could, I would. He, no, no, I was going to ask him. I don't even know that. It doesn't matter. All right. Anything else you need to know? Yes, sir, Judge. There's a tape that was played. You could label that at 1167. We'll make sure we do that. Put that in there. Yes. Previously marked as 1037, but not introduced. That's correct. Into the evidence at all. So he wanted to introduce this as a state? I've got it down as 11. It was, it was never tendered in your way or state. Oh, I understand. I thought it was still, what's called stipulated, that he agreed that I can get it in. That's why I put my defendant on that. Not that, well. Previous one, but. Yeah, that's right. Not that, but that was marked as 1167 state. Right, and it was never marked in defense. The 1537 is Ivy and Judon. Let me say it right now. Ivy and Judon was 1037. But the other tape was not ever marked. So I can't correct that. What other tape? The tape of. We showed just the two. With Rebecca Shaw and Jeff Clark with Judon Brooks on March 28th. Oh, and that's going to be 1167. That's the one that we played those segments on. We were only offering those particular segments. Did you really see that, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. Yes, they did. Okay, sure did. Sure did. Okay, here you go. What is it? Did you have other stuff on there? Yeah. We have a lot of stuff on there. We can. We'll find our own. We'll find a version of that. A copy of that judge of that interview and put it on a DVD. So that it'll be in the record that we only offered those segments there that we indicated there, 1338 through 1436. I think that's what it was as well as 22 with 2330. Yeah. It starts at 1338 and the next one starts at 2238. I don't have one. Oh, I just wait. 1436 was the first one. The second one ended at 2330, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I just go and find the kids. You do it so we be specific about it. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Do you know what the time is? 1330. Is it 1338 to 1436, the first one? Yes. Then we go from 2238 to 2330 on the second. Okay. That's correct. That was the part that we offered in addition to that. The other parts were not. So that'll burn a disk with just that on it. You'll have a chance to look at it. And that'll be part of the legislation. So we may do it just to do that whole interview. We may can redact it where we only have those parts. That'll be fine. We can do that. That'll be great. We'll do that. Okay. Give me all the scissors, ma'am. I've got to give them all the scissors, Jack. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
In addition, Judge, that stipulation we need to deal with at some point, too, to read that to the jury. And then lastly, Judge, I have to say on behalf of a number of folks that have been here for like three days, I've got these folks that have been here since Saturday, yesterday, and all day today. They've been defendants of death. David Norris, Mandy Rowland, Brian Johnson, Sarah Thomas, Chuck Ivey, Robert Kelly, Carol Kitchen, Randall Ramirez, and Jim Fullerton. And then Keila Hamilton and Melissa Green, as well as Jerry Johnson, have been here yesterday and today all day without really any management of doing it. And we have at least two other folks who are here all day today without a defendant's request. And I think there are a couple of us today and other civilian witnesses here. Brian, thank you. Maybe Andy Wong. But particularly, I mean, for all those folks that have been here three days, there ought to be some sort of management about when they might testify other than just be up here at 8.30 in the morning. You know? And they're sitting around all day Saturday, all day yesterday, all day today, and now coming back tomorrow without any indication about that. I know that the Randall Ramirez, Melissa Green, and Keila Hamilton are working in that one center. And I know, as I understand, I don't know for sure, but I understood from Keith Kelly, we're trying to get them back there to work. You know, because they're basically sitting up here and not really able to work unless they're but they work at night. So you've got to give some idea, is there a way to manage these folks so they're not sitting there sitting around all day, every day, four days, three or four days, just waiting to be called whenever they could be. And the response they've gotten from the investigator or defendant has been, just be up here. You know, just be up here. If you want to find a way to manage that jury, I can give you my weekly list of what order I intend on the call. And this is what I would like to say. He did my mom like this for almost three weeks. Had to come up there every day. He knew he had a just did not go. He did my mom like that. That's why I took my mom with him, but he got it like that. So if he did my mom like that, I don't want to hear that he got to say about me out of my witness. Not nothing. You told me to have him up here and dealt without his dog. I follow your order. I do not follow his. I'm asking you to consider putting them on call or something. And let me say this. You may have decided not to even use some of them. I don't know. But if you decided not to use some of them, that's typically left to go. But it's not unusual. I mean, I, I don't want to manage your list. Uh, I don't want to know what your list is. That's not, that's not appropriate. So, um, some of these the witnesses go fast. I, I, I mean, I can't dictate how fast they're going to go. Now, I will say this. I have been trying to not play these videos when I couldn't have them. If these stop objecting to everything I'm saying, I'm going to have to play these videos. These witnesses come here, oh, I can't recall. That, that's, so that's what, he, if he can control that, he try to go much faster. He's going to object to everything I'm saying just later on. He's ready to follow for himself. I had to play that whole video today because he objected and the dog went out. I was forced to play it. I didn't want to play it. I'm trying to get something with Judge. What I'm asking you to do is talk to your investigator and see if there's some accommodation. Okay. If there's not. Okay. I'm, I'm going to talk to him when he hears. But he hurts. So I talk to him. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how fast it's going to go. Typically, they're on 30-minute call, hour call, or something like that. That's that's what we usually say, uh, or whatever's appropriate. Okay, so I'll leave that to you all. I just don't. I don't need to get involved in that anymore. I can't do that. But do we have any good ideas? If we have, I can win the list. Well, I, if he had an idea of the ones he expects to call next, the uh, five, six folks, he's not going to be able to, you know, I'm sure they don't mind being, being up here. 
But if there's an idea, there's no, if they're number 20 on the list or 15 on the list, they probably shouldn't have been up here on Saturday, you know, or be up here if, if in fact, it, it'll take 10 or 12 before they get to them and there's no possibility of them even being able to call today. I so that's the suggestion I'm that's so. I, I think the y'all's time is better spent trying to solve the problem. Yes, sir. Okay. If we can come up with a plan, I mean, if you can get the thing go smooth and can help people get back to life, I'm not trying to be on what ball here. Well, do you have any problem with your investigators speaking to somebody in their office about that issue? No. If you can get it, y'all can get it straight. I'm, trying, I'm not trying to be nasty. But I encourage them to do that. Anything else? Let's just hear. Uh, there is right now. Let's just all stay where we're on. Let the jury get.